Hi, everyone, and welcome to our first Global Studies Assembly of the Year. Today, we are celebrating the International Day of Peace. It's observed around the world each year on September 21st. Established in 1981 by a unanimous United Nations resolution, Peace Day provides a globally shared date for all humanity to commit to peace above all differences and to contribute to building a culture of peace. The United Nations invites all nations and people to honor a cessation of hostilities during the day and to otherwise commemorate the day through education and public awareness on issues related to peace. And Mr. T, will you go to the next slide for me? Great, this year the theme is Shaping Peace Together. And even though Peace Day was yesterday, we are really excited to be able to celebrate the day all together as an upper school. And we hope that all of you will consider taking the Peace Day Challenge. And if you do something related to peace, to share that um, with the hashtag Peace Day Challenge or Shaping Peace Together. And right now, I want to turn things over to Forrest Hesheson. Hi, everyone. My name is Forrest Hutchison, and I am the Senior Prefect for the Global Studies Committee. So today, I have the honor of introducing Ms. Rosa Amelia Salamanca Gonzalez. A finalist for the 2020 Women Building Peace Award, Rosa Amelia has been working steadfastly to build peace in Colombia for nearly 30 years. Her involvement in the Women's National Summit yielded important results and no doubt shaped the final peace agreement that Colombia so proudly hosts today. The involvement of the Women's National Summit and the 2016 peace pro process between the Colombian government and the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia People's Army was crucial to realize one of the most inclusive peace agreements to date globally. Rosa Emilia's quiet leadership is heightened by her keen intuition and with her intersectional approach and her understanding of war and identity, she knows what spaces need her edge support and experience. She began her career in education, teaching intercultural educational programs to indigenous people and is excited to be back with students today. Before we welcome Rosa Amelia, I would like to turn the program over to Ms. Megan Chabalowski. Ms. Chabalowski is a program officer in the Public Education Department at the U.S. Institute of Peace, where she develops educational content and facilitates workshops for students and educators. As part of the public education team, Ms. Chabalowski also manages USIP's Peace Teachers Program and focuses on increasing young people's involvement in and understanding of international conflict management and peace building. You may also remember Ms. Chabalowski from last year's Peace Day Assembly when she gave us a virtual tour of USIP's headquarters in Washington, DC. So please welcome Ms. Megan Chabalowski. Thank you, Forrest, for that kind introduction. It's lovely to see you all again. Happy International Day of Peace. It's great to speak with you all in Mississippi from my home in Washington, DC. Um, as Forrest said, I'm Megan Chabalowski from the US Institute of Peace. I am so excited that we could help bring you your guest speaker, Rosa Emilia Salamanca Gonzalez, to you today from Colombia. I wanna thank Ms. Philpot, with whom I've had the great privilege to work this year and last year as part of USIP's Peace Teachers Program, and the many other St. Andrews teachers and students who have made this assembly possible. Each year, USIP helps raise the profile of the International Day of Peace through the Peace Day Challenge, as you have heard, which asks people across the US and around the world to join us in taking an action for peace and sharing it on social media. So this assembly today is a great way to participate in the challenge. So thank you all for doing so. My organization, the US Institute of Peace, was founded by Congress to serve the American people and the federal government by promoting international peace and the resolution of conflicts abroad without using violence. To accomplish this, we work with governments, local partners, and everyday citizens in countries where there is war or violent conflict in support of those who are working to build a more peaceful and inclusive world. We believe that a world without violent conflict is possible, practical, and essential, and so does your guest speaker here today. Uh, Rosa Emilia was recently a finalist for USIP's inaugural Women Building Peace Award. 
Every day, women around the world are leading movements to create enduring, peaceful societies. The Women Building Peace Award honors the inspiring work of women peace builders whose courage, leadership, and commitment to peace stand out as beacons of strength and hope. So please join me in welcoming Rosa Emilia, to whom I am turning the floor. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for this invitation. I want to thank Megan. I want to thank Kathleen, Emily, and of course, Forrest and Amy, or everyone that has had something to do with this invitation. Thank you so much for bringing the opportunity for me to talk with all these young people that I find that is really very, very nice, a very a beautiful experience. I also want to say hello to Forrest Hutchison, uh, and thank you for inter in the introduction. And well, I, I was thinking very much how to talk with you. I, uh, one of my dreams have ever, all the time I was telling Emily and Megan and, and the others, I was telling that I want to see Mississippi River. That is one of my dreams. But I haven't had the opportunity and I, I want to see it because it has so, or you hear that the Mississippi has so many memories, so many things that happen through coming and going through the river of Mississippi. So one day I will go there and I really think that it will be a fantastic experience for me to understand what is all what happened through and coming from Mississippi River. But meanwhile, I want to show you who I was more or less at your age. I was studying in Bogota, and I had a lot of ideas. I all the time was trying to discuss and understand why my country had so many problems. Since I have memory, Colombia has been involved in different conflicts. They, our country have had different moments of different conflicts. And I have never known what it has what is to be in a country in peace? So one of the things that we really want to understand and to learn is what is a society that can live in peace. But I think that is very difficult now in the whole world. It's very difficult to imagine a society that is in peace. And what does it mean? What does peace mean? I think for a long time, we we thought that it was only justice that it was only trying to see how things are not so bad for poor, poor people but slowly we understood that there were a lot of different kinds of discriminations that were involved in all the issues of of peace that peace knows was not only what you can feel as violent in the public sphere, but also what you can feel that it was violent in your private sphere. So walking, walking, and seeing so many things. At the beginning, when I just went to university, I decided to study anthropology. And in that time, to be an anthropologist was something very, very nice and very special because Colombia has a very incredible diverse of people living here. So we have a lot of people that came from slavery and sugar cane plantations in uh, other centuries, but we also have indigenous people and we have also uh, people, peasants that are living in the rural areas. And we are very, very diverse. So being an anthropologist was in the 17th, 18th, uh, I, I, I was in the university at the end of the 70s uh, and beginnings of the 80s in the past century. 
I discover the whole world of diversity. I discover the richness of being with indigenous people. I discover the richness of culture. I discover the written richness of, of, of so many different points of view. So at the beginning, I was trying to work also to pay my university. I, I studied in a public university because I really wanted, because I defend very much public uh, institutions, public health, public education, all this kind of institution, I think they are so important for, for people, especially in my country. So I studied in the public university, in the National Public University. It's a, it's a huge university. It's one of the biggest ones in, in Colombia. It's a very good one. And then I, to, to try to find money and to do my work and to, to create awareness about what I was seeing in society, I was, at the beginning, I tried to work also as a clown. Um, it was really fun because I, um, yeah, you always think of a peacemaker as a very serious and committed person. But we also have fun. We also can smile. We can also have other ways of going and coming in different languages with people. So in the young times, I was a, a clown and I also had a group of of mammoths uh, or muppets and muppets were very useful to create awareness with people going to different places to schools and everything to community places to tell the story of what was happening in our country after that i i decided to work very closely with indigenous communities and why because i think that the indigenous people are people that are ignored by societies are they are the original inhabitants of america but we sometimes think that they really don't exist they are in some places so one of the reivindication that we have for peace was to bring on board indigenous communities and um, there are very there are many many indigenous communities we have in colombia we have more of 86 different languages, although we speak Spanish as our main language, but we have many languages. Even in some of our islands, we speak English in what we call San Andres and Providencia. It, they speak English. They, are, they come from uh, English speaker slaves. So after that, I decided to work in education and, interna and intercultural programs for education. So I had the great opportunity of being also a teacher. And that taught me a lot about children, about how, because they were culturally very different to what I was used to have. And I was. So we decided to begin to do the intercultural programs of education but that was like i was inspired so, so all the time so much by people people have so much knowledge sometimes we think that knowledge only comes from academy and i think there is a special knowledge that we can really see in in all the academy, in schools, in formal schools. But we have forgotten all the other knowledge that people are taking away all the time when they just leave, when they have all the fights, when they fight to survive, when they fight and they know so many things about how to survive, how to move forward, how to, to really survive. So I really learned, I had a, an incredible school in between the indigenous people. They taught me so much about nature. They taught me about relations. They taught me about community. And because this talk is about building peace together, it's very important to see people that in their own ways and in their communities, they build peace and they build relations and they build so many things together. So they taught me that being an individual was very important, but if 
being a community was even more important because it was the magnificent relation and dynamic of many individualities that were so powerful working together in the achieve or of justice in the achieve of peace in the achieve of non-discrimination in the achieve of many of the things that we that all the time we are discussing about and that working together was the way also to try to find how and why politics were done why this politics and not that other policies and how things were drawn so there was a lot of things that in, in community you can come together and find more answers in the discussions more ways you can be very creative in communities so we moved and we have many many difficulties in our country it's not the worst country in the world but as many other countries that have lived in conflict in armed conflict we have had a hard time but I think that we also have a hard time because we have many different conflicts that are in contact with that that was the political conflict the political conflict in Colombia I don't know if you all know where Colombia is Colombia is in the southern in the southern part of the continent and the, it is the corner where you have two big seas the Atlantic and the Pacific we have a beautiful landscape and we and in that country many things have happened we had many political struggles and many political conflicts armed conflicts because it was a very unjust country but war is something that is very difficult to understand once you start a war or a con an armed conflict it's very difficult to stop it it's very difficult it's very easy to do it very but it's so difficult to stop it because then many things come to that conflict proud and uh people don't want to understand the others and they think that they if they don't defeat the other they will look like weak and it is it's really very difficult to de-escalate a conflict that has arisen. so we had a conflict for 60 long years still we have conflicts but in the last part of that conflict things were really bad because there were many actors of the conflict and uh, we are a very polarized society so one of the advices is that when societies began to come very polarized it's very important to have some kind of dialogue it's very important to reach the different to me not only to think that i have the truth maybe i have a little bit of the truth but one of the things that creates wars and armed conflicts is thinking that people have the truth and we have to understand that truth is something that emerge of the talk and interchange of experience between many people nobody has the truth nobody there's no one that has the truth you create it all the time so i think that one of the incredible things that uh, happened in colombia is that we began and polarize and have many people that were they dead disappeared and then a terrible thing happened and the fuel for the conflict came from the narcotraffic narcotraffic is something that is global um colombian people has been have been discriminated so much because they come from what they call a narcotraffic uh, country but what narcotraffic narco gave to this country was fuel for very own political conflict but also the problem of narcotraffic is a global problem 
there is a demand in many countries, in Europe, United States, Canada, all over the world. And then some of the countries will uh, cultivate where many poor people are, where many persons are very poor and have very little to live with. So this fuel of the narco-traffic money came to our conflict and really began a fire, an incredible fire, during the 2000, between the 1998 and 2010, 2000 something. Finally, we had a peace agreement. And in that peace agreement, there was a huge involvement of women. And let me tell you a little bit about women. Women can be very strong and very persistent in achieving peace. We work in many ways. We, we try to do our best in achieving peace. And when we talk about achieving peace, we are not talking about only the silence of arms and the stopping of killing with bullets. We are also talking in a more logical way. We are talking about peace that will end with discrimination, <coughs> that will end with uh, that will end with injustice, that will end with so many things that in societies are really the causes of the conflict. So when we are talking with a peace, we are not talking only about a naive peace or a peace that will also like put makeup in societies. We have to talk about peace in a deeper way. We have to go inside societies and then we have to fix so many things that are but not only in our societies but in the whole world. So we decided to work highly, very, very strongly in this peace agreement, but women have been working previously in peace for a very long time. So one of the things that I, I really want to share is that many women have their, a peace agenda, although many women don't know that they have a peace agenda. I have the fortune of being a recognized peacemaker but I know so many women in my country that are building peace day by day. That is incredible. Where do you build peace? You build peace in your house. But in your house is not only, peace is not silence. Peace is not confronting. Peace is not debating. Peace is not saying what they think of what I am thinking. Peace is not being a way of freedom. Freedom is something very important with respect and with inclusion and trying to have conflict resolution and transforming our conflicts. So I think that many women begin to have begun to do peace or, or to change relations in their own country, in their own uh, families, changing the relations of power that you have in your house. Being and, and trying to be and having environments of equity and non-discrimination between children, between men and women and families, etc. So peace is something that you began to have in your head. It's a conduct, it's a way of behavior, it's a way of trying to have sustainability societies that can discuss, that can tense, that can have many debates, but they will um, change in many ways culture. So peace is a strong question to culture. And there are many ways of changing culture with studies, with research, with culture, with art, with economy. But if you are sure that you are changing the original structural points that have to be changed to have really as consequence a change of the system that will bring opportunities of be a different behavior 
non-discrimination behavior, a, a real distribution for people that will really have the opportunity for work, for health, for education. So this is, is something that is really very comprehensive. When we did the peace agreement in Colombia, many of the women in Colombia were victims of the, of, of the conflict. What is to be a victim of a conflict? Is to be injured by the conflict, although you are not a combatant, not necessarily because you are a combatant, but because you were near or you have a boyfriend that was a guerrillero or you have a boyfriend that was a militar or you have a um, boyfriend or you have a family or whatever, or because you have sexual abuse, or because you were slave by different troops to work as in the in the cooking of, of meals. You have many ways of being, or being kidnapped. So many women were victims. In Colombia, we, or you have been displaced of your territory and your territory has been taken away. So we have been, we have had so many different a victims in our country, so many different ways of victims that we have 8,300,000 victims of the conflict in Colombia. That is in, uh, unbelievable. In a country of 40, more or less 47, 48 million of people, 8 million of people were victims of our conflict. So when the peace agreement began to, to work and to, everyone was working in this peace agreement, one of the things that the people were asking is that the victims must be in the center. And putting the victims in the center of the agreement was telling these people that have been armed for so long that they have not only killed between them, but they have affected society so highly. Eight million of civil victims, of people of civil society, that they had to repair those victims. And women began to work very hard in this, in this idea. This is one of the most inclusive peace agreements that we have. Uh, in gender focus, in gender perspective, but we are still working. And then I don't know if I can move forward to, to answer some of the questions that I have been asked by the students. I don't know, uh, Megan, um, uh, if I... Yes, that would be great. Thank you so much for your message. And I know that we have some students who have questions for you. And Lillian is going to start us off. Yeah, okay, thank you so much. Okay, so what advice would you give to someone trying to start a career similar to yours? Oh, that's very difficult. I, I don't have a special advice. It's something that is in your heart. You know that you want to work for others. You want to work you know in your heart that you want to be involved in things that are not, not only for you. You know you, you cannot go through the, through, through the world without seeing injustice, without seeing all oh, what is happening to other people. So the advice is just look to your heart and your mind and see if there is a call for you and you feel that you want to work with others. If, 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 that, if that call is not there, it's very difficult because you, were, you will try to do something that it doesn't come from your soul from your heart so you have to ask your heart and your mind and put this your mind and your hand in the same parallel and answer i want to work with others in these issues then you can have the answer and 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 the road is your own road i mean everyone will do their own path towards what they do, it's experiences, it's learning from others, it's being open, it's reading, it's, it's reading reality. I think so. Great question, Lillian, thank you. Sinclair, it is your turn. 
Hi, my name is Sinclair McKinney. Um, I'm in tenth grade. My question is if you were able to work with one person in the whole world, who would you want to work with? That um that is a very difficult question. I I've been thinking so much. So many people I who I I I admire. Of course, I admire people that are very well known in, in peace, uh, like Mandela or Gandhi or so, so and, and that is usual to answer. But I think I have worked with people that have taught me very much, and those are the people that are known. Uh, when I tell you I, I work with indigenous people, or I work with Afro-descendant communities, or I work with the people that are in my country that, that suffer so much with, with the conflict and victims. They have taught me so much about life, about, about empathy, about changing the souls, about, about uh, trying to to reconciliate with others after suffering so much that I think that I I have met already the people that I like to work with and those are the ones that I work with actually. Thank you Sinclair. Raymond. Um, hi my name is Raymond Huang and I have a question in Spanish if that's okay. Um, yeah. ¿Cuáles son los problemas más importantes que usted está resolviendo en Colombia ahora? ¿Y quieres que te conteste en español? You want me to answer in Spanish also? No. <laughs> I think <laughs> I uh, we have many many difficult problems. I think that one of the problems is polarization of our society. We live in a very polarized society, and that is bringing many. We we haven't. We are still. Our minds are. We have two big problems. Still, we have many armed people in the country, so we still have conflict inside the country in many of the areas because still there is some political groups that are armed, but also we have this horrible problem of narco traffic, and we also have all this uh, well narco traffic and all the organized crime that is so transnational so um, this is a huge problem for us but at the same time we our society has to do a transition in our minds and hearts and souls and everything to go out of the conflict so we are trying to implement the peace agreement but we have to implement it in what has been written in the document with all the things that we have to do for the next 15 years but we also have to change our minds and our ways of of or behavior so i think we have to learn many ways of res resolving our own normal conflicts and and trying to find a way not to have such a polarized um, a society. Also, because um, peace brings like the floor and many uh, problems has arise with very strong uh, voices because there is so much inequality in our country that now we have one of our complicated problems is that everyone is trying to find a way to have the rights accomplished. And we have to, to try to, to put our voices in the same way so we can work for a country that in some way, in, in reconciliation and, and, and some kind of harmony, we can move together towards a peace achievement, really. Great, thank you, Raymond, for your question. And we have one last question from Forrest. Hi, uh, so my question is, how can we as students engage with your mission and the mission of your organization, CSA, and other peace building efforts around the world? That is a great uh, question. And 
I was thinking, I really want to engage these, these men and young women and young men with this accomplishment of peace. So I think it will, we are actually now doing a campaign of uh, women's peace builders. So we want you to take a picture of yourself saying we support women's peace builders and you can uh, tweet to siase.org and we can do a lot of movement about and you can say i support you can uh, have small videos or, i support women peace builders because and i support women's peace builders in colombia because and that will be extremely uh, good and it will really be part of a natural campaign that we are having in our country so that will be really incredible for us if you can do this with with us so we are open and you can Twitter, you can put it in all your networks and so and so and put siase.org and put punto. I don't know what is your tweet address and the school so we can have like one I don't know one week or something like that uh, in this time of, of building peace together we can build peace together you and us we can build peace together. So I think that is an incredible good question. And I hope you will do it. Thank you, Forrest, great question. And Rosa Amelia, I cannot thank you enough for joining us today on behalf of myself and Mr. Dakarski in the Global Studies Program in St. Andrews. We are really thankful that you were willing to give of your time to speak with students today. I also would like to thank the USIP and Megan and her colleagues, several of whom are, have been watching um, you speak today as well. And Megan, do you have any final things to say? No, just a big thank you to all of you and what a wonderful call to action. And I'm excited to go do that myself. So I've made some notes. <laughs> so it, it's lovely to see you all again. Thank you for having us. And I wish that, Rosa Amelia, you could hear applause if we were in a, a scenario where we could give you a standing ovation um, for the words that you shared with us today and the importance of women in peace building. So, Thank you very much. No one can clap really loud. We can do one room of, of clapping. So, so thank, thank you, you so, so much. very much. Thank you. Bye. And I, I want to see your text. By everyone at St. Andrews, if y'all will stay in the call, we are going to transition. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Tokarski, who's going and the Global Studies team, who are going to talk about the wonderful virtual offerings for the fall. Um, Rosamilia and Megan, you are welcome to stay and hear that, but I know you've got busy schedules, so we will see you later. Bye bye. This is great, Mrs. Philpott. Thank you so much for for.